discussion on ischemia trial and ischemia CKD trial. Ischemia trial funded by National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute and others randomized 5,179 patients with moderate or severe ischemia to an initial invasive strategy or an initial conservative strategy. Initial invasive strategy was angiography and revascularization when feasible. Initial conservative therapy was of medical treatment alone and angiography if medical therapy failed. Primary composite outcome included death from cardiovascular causes, myocardial infarction or hospitalization for unstable angina, heart failure or resuscitated cardiac arrest. 318 primary outcome events in the invasive strategy group and 352 primary outcome events in the conservative strategy group occurred over a median follow-up period of 3.2 years. Cumulative event rates at 6 months were 5.3% and 3.4% in the two groups. At 5 years, the cumulative event rates were 16.4% in the invasive group and 18.2% in the conservative group. 145 deaths occurred in the invasive strategy group and 144 deaths in the conservative strategy group. Authors concluded that among patients with stable coronary artery disease and moderate or severe ischemia, there was no evidence that early invasive strategy reduced the risk of ischemic cardiovascular events or all-cause mortality over the study period. Enrollment in the study was after clinically indicated stress testing showed moderate or severe reversible ischemia on imaging test or severe ischemia on exercise testing without imaging. Computed tomographic angiography was done in most patients to exclude left main coronary artery disease and non-obstructive coronary disease. More procedure related infarctions and lesser non-procedural infarctions on follow-up were noted in the invasive strategy group. Though ischemia trial showed equivalence of invasive and non-invasive strategies, the findings do not apply to patients with acute coronary syndromes, significant left main coronary artery disease, low ejection fraction, class 3 or 4 heart failure, or those who are very symptomatic despite optimal medical therapy. Angina related health status of the ischemia trial patients was reported in another paper. Seattle Angina Questionnaire was used to assess angina related symptoms, function and quality of life. Assessments were done at randomization 1.5 months, 3 months, 6 months and thereafter every 6 months. 35% of patients did not have angina in the previous month at baseline assessment. Patients assigned to invasive strategy had greater improvement in angina related health status. As expected, differences were minimal among asymptomatic patients and large among those with angina at baseline. Another related study was the ischemia CKD trial which randomized 777 patients with advanced kidney disease and moderate or severe ischemia on stress testing. Usually, patients with advanced kidney disease are excluded from clinical trials assessing revascularization in patients with stable coronary artery disease. A composite of death or non-fatal myocardial infarction was the primary outcome measured. 123 patients in the invasive strategy group and 129 patients in the conservative strategy group had a primary outcome event at a median follow-up of 2.2 years. Higher incidence of stroke and higher incidence of death or initiation of dialysis was noted in the invasive strategy group. Authors concluded that early invasive strategy did not reduce death or non-fatal myocardial infarction among patients with stable coronary artery disease, advanced chronic kidney disease, and moderate or severe ischemia. Similar negative results were documented earlier by Courage trial 
at both initial 4.6 years median follow-up and an extended follow-up period up to 15 years for early investive strategy in chronic coronary syndrome.